Hello! Thanks for joining us. In this video, we're going to do 135 and 136. Let's do it. Let's zoom in. I got this answer, 135, so let's go ahead and explain it. So right off the back, it says the word not. That means that four of these will be characteristics. of a stratified random sample. So a stratified sample has stratifications or strata or subsets of a population. That's Those are all synonyms to this word stratified. And yes, it is random, but it's not an SRS. And the biggest reason why it is not a SRS is that literally, in an SRS, every single item in the population has an equal chance of being chosen. And that usually isn't possible in real life. If, if we think about um, if there was a lottery and we wanted to pick four people in the United States, does every person in the United States have an equal chance of being chosen? And the answer to that would be no. We have people like, um, that can't be contacted. We have people we don't know where they live. We have you know lots and lots. We have babies that can't talk. You know, every person on this earth does not have an equal chance of being chosen. So many times things are not SRSs. Oftentimes we stratify, not because we're trying to get every person to be chosen, but we stratify because we have reason to believe that maybe knowing your lumping in this group may change your opinion. And if we stratify, we have better ability to compare that afterwards when we compare our results. So there's reasons for stratification. We also absolutely wanna be random when we're doing it. So this is a design question, and that's a perfectly okay design as long as we do it right. So random sampling is a part of it. Yep, there's that word, random. Population is divided into groups that are similar on some characteristics. So the classic one is freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Those are stratifications. Everybody's at the same high school. Those are just the groups they're in. Now the strata are based on facts we know ahead of time. Yep, these are facts we know ahead of time. Before I decide, let's say I wanna ask 50 of each strata, Notice we know this ahead of time. We totally know and we want to make a point of asking 50 freshmen, 50 sophomore, 50 junior, 50 senior. Now, each individual unit in the population belongs to one and only strata. This absolutely has to be true. And we know that there's some sophomores walking around, might say junior, on the computer because they've taken a lot of credits or something like that. But if we're going to do a study for research purposes, we're going to have to shove everyone in a specific category and have a reason for it. So lastly, that leaves us with our answer. It must be E. Every possible subset of a desired sample has an equal chance of being chosen. No, this idea of an equal chance of being chosen is an SRS. And the way to explain this is um, even at our own school, there's about 500 freshmen maybe 475 sophomores, 450 juniors, and 410 seniors. If I'm taking a 50, which is a lot, and this is an appropriate design of a study, but if I'm taking 50 of each group, notice a freshman has a lower chance of being chosen in the study. They have a one in 100 chance of being selected or excuse me, one in 10. So one in 10 freshmen are going to be part of the study. Now the seniors, I'm selecting 50 out of 410. That's not the same fraction. So seniors actually have a higher likelihood, although it's not a lot, they have a higher likelihood of being chosen because there's fewer of them. So they do not have an equal chance of being selected. Now let's take a look at 136. So 136 reminded me of my formula sheet, so I got that out right here. 
And I notice this part is right here. So this is a, definitely a sample proportion question. And the rest of this part of the equation is coming right off of these words. P hat is a statistic, plus or minus the critical value, which they've abbreviated Z star, times the standard deviation of my statistic, which is this, the standard deviation of my statistic right there. So as I'm looking at this, I'm saying to myself, which of the following statements is correct? Now, as I glance through here, it's talking about conditions. That would be a condition, whether or not something is too small. R, N, and I would be a condition. Is it independent? Is it random? And is N big enough? So these two have to do with conditions. Mm, sample size, that's talking about N. So that's a condition question. That's a condition question. So three of these are conditions condition type questions. So let's get to that, because as you're reading it, you're saying to yourself, what? Four yeses. The conditions for a sample proportion, are not 30. That's for a sample mean. And in fact, we don't even need 30 if we're told that the data is normal or approximately normal or nothing really weird is going on in the data so we don't have reason to believe that it's not normal. And so for all those reasons, we really don't need 30, okay? Unless it is kind of an oddball distribution and then we really don't wanna proceed unless we have 30. So that's not, A's definitely out. Mm, C, jumping to C, the confidence interval is valid because no conditions are required. We always know conditions are required. Always. Conditions are required. If we don't have independence or enough or randomness, then it's no good. So what would be another statement here? the interval is not valid because n times p is too small. Now this is a little bit of a trick question. Let's think about this for a minute. Um, most of the time in our calculator, we don't calculate n times p. So it looks here that we talk to 100 people, so n is 100, and p hat, so the proportion of people that said yes. Well, the proportion of people that said yes would have been four out of 100. So when I multiply n times p hat, 100 times 4 over 100, bink, bink, 4. This number has to be greater than or equal to 10, and it's not, so we got problems. If we were doing this problem by hand in a free response, we would have had a problem with this. Now, they do try to sneak you a little bit, because instead of just saying, I didn't get enough yeses, they kind of set it a slightly different way. But this is the formula. If they don't come out and tell you how many yeses, they merely say we asked 100 people and 4% of them said yes, then they're basically telling you four said yes and they just didn't out, come out and say it. Now this idea of no opinion, I think it's still okay to proceed because I want at least 10 yeses and 10 things that were not yes. So I could think I believe I could lump these both together. This was the people that said yes. These are the people who did not say yes. So I'm okay with this no opinion business. Um, so I've definitely narrowed it down to D. Thanks for joining us.